time. Hope everybody's well. We're here at XR Podcast, episode number two. Uh, I'm excited to be here uh, with the with the home team and also a awesome guest, Josh Jones. Uh, yeah, I got Frank Scalanta here. We, Hello, buddy. we had our podcast last time; it was pretty cool. It worked out. And then some people from the home team. I got Karina. Hello, how are you guys? And Bree. Hi, everyone. <laughs> And then again, back to Josh. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome, Josh. Welcome. I love being here in this new space. It's awesome. Yeah, you like the space? Oh, I love it. Looks nice. clean, fresh. You got great computers, great nice. people. Nice. Yeah. Hey, long way. Long way. Uh, how long do how long we know each other? We're almost at two decades, I think. Two decades. Wow. Yeah, two decades. Long time. Yeah, yeah it's been a while. Almost, been... almost like my age, basically. <laughs> I feel like we all used to lie about our age a little bit, though, in this industry. You remember? Yeah. How long have you been with me? I've been a part of Greg's team for five years now. Five years. That's five amazing. Years. It seemed like it was yesterday. I know. It's my day one office. Been here since the beginning. You even bought an house with me. I even bought a house with you and Josh. And yeah. Josh. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't use Talk that. about loyalty. <laughs> right. That's right. I'll get the upgrades. Even though she could sell it by herself. I know. That's right. I'm my own person now. You, Karina, how long have you been? Um, since 2019. Okay. And I, I was actually helping my client buy. To buy another house of mine? <laughs> to buy a multi unit. And so I saw your sign and I called right away. The house was. The multi-unit was amazing, so I'm like, I gotta get in there. So I gave him a call, and he's like, yeah, no problem. I was surprised, you know, I was like, oh my God, we can get in right away. And we went in there and right away submitted the offer. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah. You still own it, too. Yeah, and- um, It's a good building. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a good building. Josh and I go back even further. I said, oh, do we junior Yes. We, go to, we know it's a, it's a high school together. We, we went to high school. Dude. Yeah. Ju- I have a story I could tell you about Frank and junior high. We wanna hear it, we wanna hear it. Uh, all right, so it was uh, we had this we had this talent show thing going on, and I forget the name of it. Frank was a year older me, uh, older than me in school, and so he uh, he starts shredding on, on on the guitar, man, and he was ripping. I think it was Heart Shaped Box or something. Uh, by wait, 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 wait. so he's playing the guitar. He's playing the guitar and he's rocking out. He, maybe it was Smells Like Teen Spirit or something. Uh, I think I think they like cut the time down, so I just had to like combine a bunch of stuff into one. I think it was in eighth grade. So we so you went, we went to Hauser. I was, I was probably seventh grade. You were sixth grade. So yeah. Wow, you so guys go grade. way back. Yes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And Me and Bree. <laughs> probably was still oh, grade in school. Grade school. No, yeah, you guys were kindergarten at the time. We were probably. <laughs> so it was we're, like a very organic relationship yeah. where how you guys uh-huh. all met i think that's pretty cool yeah i think everything grew organically yeah um, like the whole office and and we're finally we finally open you want to say the new like we didn't yeah, we're, 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 we're at the office think, right now i think last time we were opening the office we weren't open to the public so now we're, mm-hmm. we're here yeah we we're virtual last time right we were virtual yeah. but uh yeah we're here now. so it's nice to have it. yeah it's nice to have the space so we're excited yeah, yeah. we're excited Finally, it took a little headaches here and there, right? Ah, there's always headaches. That's tough. That's how life is. You get, you get, you finish one headache, you get to the next one. Yeah. We have some people work for free. Adam keeps saying that <laughs> <laughs> today, so it worked out. That's right. You know. But Josh, what do you think about the company, man? Yeah, so um, I've handled mortgages now. This is my 19th year handling mortgages, and and this is 2022 was was kind of a kind of a reset. We were coming off of 2020 and 2021, yeah. Yeah. where you had all time low interest rates and pretty much- Free money. Yeah, free money. And and for every house, there was what, 10 buyers, yeah. right? Sometimes more. Yeah. And now you have higher interest rates. And so in, in, in 2020 and 2021, the feds printed five, six, seven trillion dollars. And when you flood that money into the economy, um, people don't care how much things cost anymore. And so, and, and then it caused prices to go up. There was fewer people working, so, so employers had to pay more to get people to come work, and so you had all this inflation. And one of the tools that our Federal, our federal Reserve does is they raise interest rates. So they wanna push up the cost of our borrowing. 
Um, so we have less disposable income, so we won't Uber Eats as much or go out to dinner or go on, or go on vacations, right? Like, yeah. um, but they need to, right? They need it to. They need it to. They need it to. Otherwise... And I feel like for COVID, we would have had a crash if they didn't give away the money. Oh, yeah. Away, right? Without so a... then it would have been worse. Oh, There's a crash for sure. People like, you know, losing everything, right? It was scary. Like, almost the Great Depression style, in a yeah. way. So they covered that up. They protected us, but then they created inflation. Yeah. Now we have and to now just... We're yeah. We're backtracking, I guess you say. And, and it's, I think, for most of the indicators, all of the interest rates that they've been raising, it's been it's been doing its job, okay. but there's still more work to go. Okay. Because you're seeing the the uh, consumer price index, which is which is what us as a consumer pays for like water, yeah, yeah. our cell phones, and things like that. That's been still going up. Okay. Mm -hmm. But where where we've seen stuff come down for once is like at the pump, right? Our gas yeah. has right. come down. We need everything else to follow. Yeah. Then the rates can come down. Until that point, though, we're going to be mm -hmm. we're going to be a little bit higher. Than this. Because the Fed just said they're going to they're going to keep increasing a little bit, right? Like you guys yeah. heard inflation. Uh, we we're not we're not there yet. We're not there yet. The uh -huh. Feds are are probably have two two more two more increases left. Okay. And then hopefully that will have done the trick. Okay. Where then they can stop. Okay. Reevaluate. And then we can see the rates come down. And, but it, it, is, it is a necessary evil, but it's part of our economy. It's always going up and down, yeah. and that's okay. Uh, but I think still the economy and the house, right, we're real estate offices, right? And we sell real estate, but I feel like in the housing side, I don't see no crash. People, yeah, they're scared, but still the values are keeping up, right? Well, there's, there's still an inventory situation. So mm -hmm. Yes. We went to actually, what do you think? I know Bree was there. Correctly. You were there, right? We went to that uh, oh, the market, market outlook. 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 Yeah. We all went to the outlook, and that's yeah, what they said, cool. basically. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't take my word for it, but he said, yeah. and they said if we lower rates, we still have, we still have an issue with the play, but with uh, yeah. inventory, inventory yeah. now, yeah. and if right. we lower rates, it's just going to make it more of an issue. So, okay. so, but a lot of sellers have a lot of equity too in their house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you know, Karina does a lot of stuff online with uh, yeah. like updates and. Yeah, I like to just inform people and like make these market yeah. update videos. Mm -hmm. I go like in different neighborhoods in Chicago or sometimes suburbs, and the trend that I'm seeing is that we have dropped in property inventory compared mm -hmm. to last year, and therefore that's why mm -hmm. we are seeing more equity on some of these homes. Like I see from. 2% increase to even 20% increase in some of these suburbs. So people that bought yeah. like in 2020, 2021, now they're sitting in like over $50,000 worth of equity in their yeah. property. It's like the idea of someone saying, okay, so if rates are higher, should I buy? And it's like, okay, well, the alternative is, what are you gonna rent and pay $2,500 a month right. for the next right. year and spend 30 grand? Right. So it's, there's no better investment, I don't think. Yeah, exactly. And so, and like for you represent a lot of first time home buyers, right, out there. And what they're gonna do, they're gonna de be there for a long time. Yeah, right? so. it's, it's either you're gonna buy now with a mm -hmm. higher interest rate or have a lower interest rate and then you're gonna be in a multiple offer situation where everyone right. is buying yeah. at the same time. So it's kind right. of like, well, pick your battle, which one. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So not only like, you have a little bit you know, more possible, like less competition, right? Yeah. And maybe even buy a little bit cheaper. Yeah, you buy a little cheaper, that means the principal is lower, and then you can just refi later on. Yeah. Refi later on, right? Yeah. Like you've done it like probably a few times, right? Well, I don't refi. Yeah. yeah. The rate goes down. How many times have you done it? Like I refi? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I can take one. Yeah. If it makes sense, <laughs> right? Yeah. Listen, guys, I'll tell you, Frank, this yeah. is guy on this table. <laughs> wait, 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 I'm done. Hey, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's frugal. Frugal. I like that word. Frugal. I don't waste one. I learn every day from Frank. You know, I don't get wrong. And that was a compliment. Smart with the money. But but no, but Frank is all about like, you know, making No, I mean right. Yeah. Like well to your point about the rents, like Josh was saying, it's like I did have someone they got freaked out and they were talking to their friend and okay. and they were they're paying three grand rent. Okay, three grand rent. The payment on the house was twenty five. They were moving different locations, so the payment on the house was twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah. 
and they decided to keep renting. I, I don't know if that, but okay, is it's like, they, everyone's like, oh, it's gonna crash. I'm like, I, I'm not seeing it. But at the end of the day, they're gonna pay 36,000 in rent. So even if, they, even if they got crashes, yeah. like you're already down 36,000. And then, and who's, yeah, Zach. So is that smarter? No, or no. The, the person that's back from the, is like a landlord, right? So yeah. like, you know, you, and, Karina, and they're trying, people that own buildings. And they're trying to play the market, just like anything, even stock market, you're trying to play the markets. Mm -hmm. You're playing the market then, so. Yeah. yeah. It's like they always say everything goes up and down. Yeah. And like historically, I was looking at some properties when they were purchased back in before the market crash, like mm -hmm. 2004. The interest rate then was like 8%, 9%. Sure, prices were lower, but with inflation, those people can, if they still owe the, like money on the home, they can refinance in today's market. And even though it sounds like, oh my God, the interest rates are so high they would still get a better deal than they did before. Correct. Yeah. And yeah. so I think like that, if you see it that way and you right. accept, okay, this is my new interest rate, maybe in another five to 10 years, inflation is going to drive everything up, which means yeah. properties are going to yeah. have more value. Yeah. And then you can also refinance. Be okay. So I think that's like, it depends how you see it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we always have to just educate our buyer. Right. We mm -hmm. have right. to let them know, like show them the trend. 20 years interest rate was seven, eight, nine yeah. percent versus right. five, right. six, seven percent today. Yeah. But how do we educate the buyer? How do we educate like the buyer? Like, I wish it would come in the office. They could, hey, now I have a good space. So, we do this. Hey, come, but this, yeah, right? We do this. We do right? another episode, we, podcast, talk a little social bit. Media. Social media. Oh, yeah, you girls are like, Top yeah. I call you the, the social media gurus of the office. <laughs> we're trying. You, 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 both of you are like. I think we try. It's a yeah. lot with um, our generation. Okay. We are. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> the younger, the younger like, generation. Oh. Another, another compliment. <laughs> Man. Generation. Well, I mean, we are born into <laughs> technology media, with this. Social media. Yeah, I get it. You guys are it. too, but like, yeah. we we had. Um, hey. I try to keep yeah, up like, with you girls, all right? I'm trying. Hey, I, I got my stories like, out there. I'm not as good. I'm not yeah, as fancy. Yeah, like in high school, we were already on fa like sophomore, junior year, yeah. Facebook yeah. and yeah. YouTube. Yeah. And when I create content on social media, like my ultimate goal is to try and inform people, give them as much knowledge as possible. And then, yeah, of course, like I do post little things here and there, like where to go eat, you know, in Chicago yeah. or some suburbs. That's knowledge of And food. Yeah, food. you know, I also like to have fun with it. Yeah, for for me, like, yeah, right? Pasta's <laughs> good. Coffee's so good. Food network. Hey, just in case I gotta have options, real estate doesn't work out, I switch yeah, gears, exactly. you know? Hey, Making pasta. pasta. Yeah. No, I love it. I love creating content. I you know, I like see Brie yeah. too. And Brie's for me, it's like, both of you. I love being creative. So incorporating yeah. my creativity and yeah. real estate, it's like a huge win. But I feel like like the the public out there, right? They like it. Like they're 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 checking you guys out. Yeah. You know, all the content yeah. and everything. You, the showing your touring. You know, it's kind of cool. Yeah, and when you, you attract a lot of what what it shows is who's buying right now. It's millennials buying right now. That's true. What mm -hmm. do millennials do? They look at social That's media. Just millennials. Yeah. We're, we're we still millennials. Yeah. You guys are millennials. Are millennials. 1980 yeah. and up is a millennial, yeah. right? They think we're old. Like you guys who are at all now? I don't know. Well, we're gonna, yeah, we are. So like, how does it feel for you to go from like meeting people on a daily basis? You still meet people now, but like, but now being able to make a video and yeah. reach more people than you would on a daily basis. Cause like for me, if I post a video, Brie too, I see her views. Like she'll post a video and she gets like 20,000, 30,000 oh, views. Wow. In just one video, she reached sure. 30,000 people versus the old school way, which is still amazing. That's, that's Meeting like somebody in person, yeah. you know, you only yeah. meet one or two. I think, think about 30,000 people is like a town. I think yeah. oh, <laughs> so, it's a town. <laughs> like it, yeah. I think, I think, it's, I think the, the concept is still the same, just the, the vehicle to do it is yeah. different. It's changed a little bit. And yeah, yeah. And you're, it, you're it, it, up, yeah. It's like you're probably still going to get the people that are the regular old fashioned way. Yeah. This just gives you more of a, uh, I can't think of the word. But then they also get to know who you really are, right? Like, you know, exposure. They give you, yeah, exposure. you more exposure, they get to know who you are, like before. You before know, they even meet you like, in yeah, person. Before, before you know, like lay out who you were right, right. Yeah. right there on that one initial yeah. meeting, whatever, they kind yeah. of, oh, I saw you did this, I saw you did that, and kind of like. Like now 
this podcast, they're going to see the office podcast, right? They're going to know a little about the home team. And then, you know, every episode we're going to have new people. So they're going to know about us. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, and then we can inform people about why they should buy multi-units and correct. single- Hey guys, I'm sorry I interrupt the video, but please subscribe and like our video below, something something like that underneath. And also I wanna let you guys know we have a grand opening March 19. We can't wait to see everybody. Uh, wait a second, I can't remember the time. What? Frank, what, what time is it? Uh, one to four. One to four? Yeah, All right. What about if somebody shows up at five? If we're here, we're here. If we're here, we're here. <laughs> right. In case we close the door. Take care, guys. Yeah, you do a lot in, with multi-units? Yeah, yeah, I would say, yeah, a little bit of everything. I kind of like everywhere, single family, but multi units, like my thing that I love the most. Yeah, because that's how I started when I got into sales. Yeah, I was buying my own multi unit and I wasn't in real estate officially. I had my real estate license, but it was hanging with the apartment complex like company. Mm -hmm. So I was able to negotiate my own deal, buy my own deal without being an MLS member or anything like that. And so I was like, wait a minute, this is really good. And then once I bought it, I moved in one of the units, my family moved in another. And that's how easily I was able to save money Yeah, really quick. And then five years later, I was able to sell it and get the money that I put down. Plus all that equity that came from the property. So yeah, I think I think what's uh, we got to talk about is more what's going on with sellers, right? It's like I'm, I haven't actually to deal with two that I'm off the list that we're pricing, and I'm trying to say like everyone's looking. Obviously, they see something that sells and they want to price it yeah. above. So let's say it sells for two fifty five. It was listed for two six or. Let's say they got multiple albums, two fifty, all two fifty five. Yeah. So I'm trying to kind of say like, hey, buyer has to be more cautious now. Yeah. yeah. With the rates, so you, let's just, especially this time, it's price it to price it tight speed. Okay. Yeah. Not to right. You got. I mean, you, didn't you just have a showing with some buyers and they're flipping out about the rate? That, yeah. They were. They were scared. You know, I mean, they were scared. And yeah. Everyone's. Everyone's a little bit nervous. You no, know, it's yeah. Everybody it's wants to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and everybody both in the news. Everybody has this, you know, iPhone, right? So you get yeah. all these. You know, do the all the time. Yeah. So you know, the Fed come each up and they're scared of their life. They're like, oh my God, what's going to happen to the mortgage? Should go so yeah. high? Maybe Josh could give us some insight. Yeah, because I, I, I yeah. Are, don't want anyone to understand. Yeah, I, I try. Yeah, I try to explain that, that that's not directly correlated. Yeah. With mortgage rates. So maybe you could. Yeah. It's confusing. Yeah. So, so there's the you know chairman of the Federal Reserve. His name's Jerome Powell. Okay. And so. When they all meet, they they discuss monetary policy. So what are they gonna do based on economic data? So are like jobs numbers up or down? Are the cost of goods higher or lower? Yeah. And so when they raise rates, they're not actually raising directly mortgage rates. They're raising short-term interest rates, mainly Federal Reserve to bank lending. Okay. A lot of interest rates we have in our lives are based on that, though. So that's like credit card rates, line, a line of credit rates. Um, I mean, they're tied with the Fed rate. Yes, they're tied with the Fed rate. So like Prime or something? Is yes. Something? Yeah, yeah. So, so like, like simple words. Like yeah. I, I'm a okay. So I understand all these fancy words. When the Feds raise Prime, it causes a lot of interest rates in our life to go up. Okay. Mortgage rates follow that because when the Fed's when the Fed is raising rates, it's basically them telling us, "Hey guys, okay. there's inflation out there. We need to raise rates to take some of that cheap money out okay. your 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 disposable okay. income." Okay. Mortgage rates say, "Well, if there's inflation, we can't have low interest rates here because." But it's not right away. They don't do it. Right it's away. Not, it's not They're right away. It comes next week. A quarter up mortgage. Would hold off, right? And, Mortgage and... might hold off for a okay. while, okay. but eventually it's going to catch up. Catch up, okay. But there is going to be to a certain point where the rates are going to be up here, mm -hmm. and mortgage rates are going to start coming down mm -hmm. a lot quicker, okay. Because wow. all that hard work that the Feds did okay. to cool inflation is now taking effect, because okay. because mortgages are based on bonds, That'd be awesome. and in in bonds are what are what interest rates follow. So hopefully six months to a year from now, we're gonna see some lower rates, yeah. but no lower rates is gonna bring more competition for your buyers That's and your true. sellers. That's true. But if I buy now, right? You don't have to pay more for yeah, that they, property. They, yeah, but later on the next year, if I could call you again, you give me some discounts, of course. Of course. Hey, can you refi this when the rates low? Absolutely correct. It's, it's the old saying, you marry the property, you date the rate. Yeah. Because yeah. the rate is always changing. Sure. 
going deep with clients about numbers and all that. We do too to a certain point, but yeah. we're not like quoting them to read. Like what are they telling you? Are they, are they, what's their first reaction when yeah. you tell them like hey? So we always ask, I always ask, what is your comfort level? What are we shooting for? Because yeah. there's a lot of great products out now that'll that is going to allow you to have a much, much lower uh, rate for the first 12, 24, or 36 months. And so people are really gravitating towards that because it's allowing them to say, I never have to pay a six or six and a half or seven percent rate. I can pay something in, something in the fours. And then when the rates come back down, then yeah. you can refinance and you never pay yeah. the higher rate. Yeah. So it's just getting more creative with yeah. you guys and saying, hey, can yeah. you can you help us with the deal with maybe credits or something like that to make this work? But usually yourself, like when I send you a client, let's say an example this weekend, you set up a Zoom meeting or meet up with oh, them, yeah. right? And go through all the different examples. You have to. Right? You, you go, you, every, everybody's different and maybe somebody is needs an interest only or somebody has a VA loan or yeah, have a chair, right? Speaking of that, yeah. we can even have a client, you judge with a client right now, mm -hmm. and he's in a really great position where he can choose many options, but he just doesn't know what direction he wants to Correct. go to. Correct. So that's what we did. We got in a Zoom meeting and we're yeah. like, hey, here are your different scenarios. Yeah. If you do yep. VA, if you buy a single family yeah. home, if you go commercial, if you go multi-unit, literally broke it down to yeah. each scenario uh, yeah. which now you'll be able to analyze and say yeah. okay maybe this is the best fit for me yeah, yeah. which well yeah. i think people generally even though it's not all you know you're not giving people some right they like the option right like you could and then they could say hey i'm gonna i'm gonna be here long term yeah maybe i'll take the, the i'll take the i'll use the credit for yeah. you know use the credit for repairs or whatever and then hopefully Right. So but that's how we get it. Yeah, sometimes you don't know. I mean, this way of Josh, you know, and thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, all the time, you know what I mean? I appreciate everything. Yeah. I love I love working oh, with XR. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we try our best, but it's good to partner up with good people that are yeah. on top of stuff. Yeah. And top I, of the game, you know? What are you seeing on the screen? Like, what are the with your sellers? And, and it, I just think since last year when the interest rate started spiking, it was hard for people to understand that there was a market correction. Yeah. And what that means is like you just have to adapt to the new times. Yeah. But now what I am seeing is that sellers are starting to understand, okay, there's not a lot of inventory, so yeah. I'm not going to drop too much. But because there's not a lot of buyers that are willing to pay right now the new interest rates, I'm going to at least like, you know, come halfway, which that's giving credits or repairing something. But the sign not to you, but besides all that, but the sellers, I feel like us, we bring different things to the table for ourselves. You know, we're not only doing like listening to crowd, yeah, we're educating them and everything, and we're listening to crowd, we're doing the basic picture, but we do more. Mm -hmm. You know, besides whatever, I go there, hug them, and hold their hand. <laughs> yeah, that's all me, but you guys, for example, you guys have two regions of that story, and I think a lot of us doing extra besides picture, social media, uh, make, making everybody a aware of the product, right? Like you're like on TikTok, right? I don't know what it's called TikTok? What's it called? TikTok. 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 Yes. It works. It works. Right? It works. I I, I did a, a quick little walkthrough mm -hmm. for, for my listing and okay. it, it got a, a bunch of views and yeah. um, I hosted a couple open houses yeah. um, consistently throughout the weekends and I had a lot of traffic coming in and yeah. I had a good amount Correct. of people saying, hey, I seen, Correct. I seen it on TikTok. Oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's cool to see so, in person, in real life. Exactly. Saying, like, exactly. I seen, I seen it, yeah. it popped up on my page. Yeah, you know, but that's like, extra. Like, yeah, that's yeah. something extra we're doing Ab for some, Absolutely. Right, yeah. Absolutely. Like a lot of people back in the day, even now, nothing wrong with an other agent, but they're just spending money with little pictures, right? That hundred dollars sure. floating out. Yeah, but but not doing. We're doing like besides marketing. Even we're, we're not wasting time, but we're spending a lot of time even on our phone. Yeah. To do the social media, to put it in the stories, to do the TikTok. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I think that helps a lot. It's not yeah. um, doing a reel or a TikTok. It's not like a little quick little. Correct. Right. You guys are driving business right. to your exactly. It's it's, it's, it's right. important. Yeah. yeah. I had a client. Before he listed with us, yes. he was a four star buyer. Oh, yeah. And I've seen how long he had been in the market. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, let me just give him a call. Oh, it, was the market, yeah. it was in the market for about three weeks. Wow. Three and weeks to a month, yeah. And you met up with him. I remember you told me he had not gone to 
Yeah, as well as that, I gave him a call. I said what we have to offer to some of our services, and he's like, okay, I'm willing to listen. So I came, sat down with him, and we did. We ran the numbers, and he's like, wait a minute, I didn't think about this, this, and that. I can actually still save money by using a realtor. Wow. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, okay, I'll give it a try. Yeah. The photos and the video yeah. sold the house. I know. Like, People were already trying to submit an offer right. before coming to the open house because yeah, the awesome. video was like amazing. But think about it, in a small market with a high rate, you know what I mean? And he didn't have nothing, but you were able to drive a lot of people mm -hmm. to the door. Yeah. So that's yeah. for how. Yeah, the seller was really so happy. Yeah. And these days, you really need that expert, you know what I mean? I'm not saying we're super expert, we're learning every day, but we know a little bit, you know, on that, that average, you know? We have a lot of experience, we have a lot of tools. Um, well, we're out there every day, so you're, oh, yeah, you're yeah. working with buyer and they, yeah. they have, you know what they're looking for, yeah. they're sell it. And we're using a new tool. Yeah, I don't have out there, we're sure. also, like, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's just great, like, we have the new office now, so yeah. if maybe there's something that you want to, you right. need some, some help on or some advice on, that now we can all just think. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's nice, it's nice we're all here. Yeah. We can talk. We're it's very, yeah, yeah. We could, uh, yeah. We get to share with each other what's exactly. going on out there. Like, this is what's happening at this exactly. weekend at my open house. Besides my WhatsApp messages, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so that, that helps a lot, you know? But uh, that's what I Yeah, think. but overall, the market is picking up. It has been this year. I'm yes. starting to get, like, our open houses this weekend. It was amazing. Oh, my God. Uh, it's crazy. It's, yeah. I was out doing shows this weekend, and the open houses yeah. we went to, yeah. they were packed. So I think been, we're starting to adapt. I think so. Great. so um, even if Josh and I give them a good deal, right? <laughs> Sorry, I uh, mean Paul. Yeah, you know, it's it's your own. It's it's your own. own. Yeah, we your own Paul. We there's still a lot of demand. Yeah, so absolutely. The American dream is always there. Buyers want to buy. Something. You know, always. Um, whether it's yeah, they yeah. Right yeah. side. That's what we're saying. Like even if we go to a metaverse world, right? I don't know. The Facebook guy wants that we go to the metaverse world. Good. People still need a place to put their Google goggles on. Yeah. They still need a room, you know? <laughs> to charge, right? To charge and whatever. But at the end of the day, it just it keeps coming down to educating our yeah. environment, our seller. Yeah, I agree. So what would you tell seller when any advice you give them now? I mean, like if this like today, like because every every month is different, every every uh, season's different, year is different. Uh, for example, for me, it's like okay, now we're coming like peak spring market. My, my thing is like, okay, if you want to try to get the higher price, that's fine. Like, I don't, I kind of put the facts on the table. This is what I think. What do you, it's your household one. Yeah. I just tell them like, don't waste time to adjust. Like if it's not working, you know, we'll talk about it. I mean, that's what I tell them. I did like, as of today. Um, and then if it, when August comes, June, June, July. Wait, well, you tell them to list now, right? I tell them to list now, but like, if you're going to go for the higher price, I don't want to be June 1st. And then, like, and then you're pulling lower. back. Yeah, we should lower. Yeah, yeah. 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 like you're gonna get you're getting traffic today. So if you're if you're probably not selling, if you're not selling the next 15, 20, 30, unless it's a but the market will tell you. Sorry to interrupt you, man, but the market will tell you because when I do like I have a listing right now, beautiful listing. And they go a little higher price, but the market's telling I'm bringing people in the door. Eat away. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there's one I know. There's there's one I had at 30 days I had 40 shows. Exactly. So that means maybe unfortunately That's what I'm saying. You take your job, so that's good. Yeah. You know, unfortunately the price needs to be adjusted. Exactly. Uh, but I do believe now is the time too. Well no, now is the time. I'm you, saying now you're a seller out there. Now is the time now is the time. But if, but my point is when you come because everyone's like, Oh, what about the pricing? Like, that's the tough conversation. Yeah, you have to be sure. If you're if you're been on the market it's, and it's been three weeks, four weeks, you're not getting an offer and yeah. your showings are subsiding, yeah, then you gotta think about it. You don't wanna wait until yeah. May thirtieth yeah. to and then try to adjust and I can change them. That's, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Then people see it sitting on the market. Yeah. Like, what's true. wrong with the house? Yeah. Why hasn't it sold yet? Well, well you're, you're chasing it at the 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 demand the demand yeah. the demand. Yeah. You know, but it depends on the two, right? Where they're at. Oh, it always depends. If you guys got a if you got a situation, okay, cool. If he's like, I don't want to try it out because you know. Yeah, you were like myself. I I I, I try it out. Yeah. You know, I try. Listen, anything. There's does and does. There's each have. There's there's times. At least this is me. There's times where right. you can. Um, like you could try it out, and I'm just yeah. saying. I usually, if I use history as an example, every year we go through it. Like in 2023, this will probably be for these next three months are the peak time to sell. 
right? Yeah, of course. And if you're not, it, it's not going to get. I, I don't think it. Could, I'm not saying if you don't sell now, you're never going to sell. But this would be the time to do it. But why? Yeah. Going back to that, the peak time. Why is it the peak time? Like why? why? Oh, because people fall. I mean, I, I tell my buyer all the time. Is what? Go ahead. Is it weather? No, I don't think it's the weather. <laughs> Tax returns. Like tax, yeah. tax, tax returns. returns. All come to an end. The leases, Josh, right? All the leases, the majority of the leases. More, majority of the leases expire. Exactly. Later. So they're like, hey, let me nibble the mark. How are you but let me check it out. Yeah, it's, no. it's all those. Three. Yeah. Hey, you got like people that like October, September through, or August through December. There's, there's always people buying, right? But, yeah. but the majority of people are vacation, school starting, holidays. Yeah. And, January comes, okay, if we're gonna make a move, let's they get yeah. they get they start they get the itch to do it, they do it and then and then yeah, if you're a seller, you how many new approvals like pre approvals have you done like this month probably? I would you know? uh it's probably in the realm of twenty and twenty five. I mean there's wow. but yeah. it's but it's but it's finding the inventory. Right? Yeah. So like we're excited for spring market. Yeah. Want to see those homes coming on the market oh, again wow. and um but yeah, I mean it's it's but really the the demand is there regardless of the rate okay. because you have a population that is growing at 2 million people a year and a housing supply that's not even close to that number. Right. So you're going to have stability, you're going to have growth, and you're going to have demand. It's always going to be there. The yeah, as yes. Great as, as great as last year's market was for sellers. Yeah. And as the doom and gloom here in the news, the inventory is still lower than it was last year. Yeah, absolutely. You, you have a couple people who are like, well, I'm in that three percent rate. I don't want to sell, right. but do I do it? Right. Yeah. But the bottom line is, you always have life events going on. Why people Absolutely. have people have to sell? You sell. You have children. You have marriage. You have debt, divorce, and death. Those are unfortunately huge reasons why why people sell. So hopefully that inventory comes up a little bit, and we can get get these people into homes. With inflation going down. And the price of like you know maybe yeah. material cost a little bit lower than the developer to get into the game again. Yeah. yeah. So right now, okay. yeah, it was yeah, so high. Right the margins are not good. Listen, and, I'm a developer. And labor, yeah. labor is very expensive. Very expensive. It's not that good. I'm not gonna build a house for you. No. So, what am I gonna do for free? I'm not charity. Yeah. So I don't even love everybody, but you're just not gonna do it. Yeah. But yeah. I think they're gonna get there. For some of negative is the rate, obviously, but the good news is that it's always so low. Yeah. Yeah. If, so you're, right, if you're price right, you're gonna move. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, right, it's gonna move. It's gonna stop. Absolutely. So, but yeah, I, I love the demand. I love there's still demand. The demand, you know, real estate. Josh seems pretty positive about it. Oh yeah. It, and so and there's so no that, better investment. Yeah. It's, it, it's Sorry. Like, and even I'm multi, I'm a big multi unit guy. You know. So I think there's an investor too. If you're an investor out there, I think it's great time to buy stuff. Like, Absolutely. You know, people need a house. Right. Yeah. The, and, uh, the majority of my clients right now, they're all looking for investment properties. Yeah. Or even tenants, we have sometimes they need like, uh, yeah. right? They need they need a place to live. So if you're a landlord, I th I think it's great because you know you can make some income on it. You know, maybe more than the bank will pay you. And I think on this table we all like we're all landlords, I believe. I think so. I think it's the first time multi-family owner. It's a little bit scary because they get into and they're like, well, I don't know about the laws. I don't know how to evict somebody that don't pay. That's true. How do I draft the police? How do I That's true. Like somebody? I agree. And like for example, for me. Going back to like why I promote multifamily a lot mm -hmm. is because since I have 10 years of experience yeah. helping manage properties, helping a uh, qualified client, what I do is I tell my client, let's find you that multi unit. Once we find you that multi unit, I'm going to help you find your tenant. That's nice. We're going to qualify That's them. Cool. I'm going to drive up the lease for you. That's and cool. I'm going to give you some good qualified tenants. That way, two to three years, once the tenants are also ready to buy a house yeah. in the future, uh -huh. they're like, yeah, we're ready. You were kind of cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, it's awesome. Kind of cool. and that's why we go, you know, our, even our side stage, right? The slogan, extra mile. That's, right. That's yeah. going the extra mile. That's pretty much it, you know? I love it. That's how you have to take a starter, right? With your multi unit. That's yeah. how you get it. Yeah. Right? That's how I negotiated like my own multi family and I was just the leasing agent at right. that time. And so I had to figure out like how to schedule appointments. I wasn't an MLS member at all. So when I was ready to get paid, how did you schedule appointments? Yeah, like, without yeah. being an MLS. Yeah, you schedule appointments. Mm -hmm. Wow. I would find them on uh, Zillow or Redfin. Okay. I would call the agent and they'll say, "Hey, 
what's your MLS ID number? Yeah. And I said, I don't have one. Yeah. I'm, you know, I, Oh, you're just like a knuckle set now. I was at least eight, and, yeah, 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 with the company call apartment yeah. people back in like yeah. here. And yeah, I scheduled it. Cool. I found the property. I negotiated. I asked for credit. So I was like, I'm just going to do all this. Like, I'll figure it out. And then, awesome. yeah. That's the best way to learn. Yeah. Yourself, it? And then it was amazing because I was able to live in one unit, rent out the other, and have my mortgage get paid that way. And then five years later, once the property was amazing, I was able to sell awesome. it and get that equity yeah. back. So I think multifamily purchase is yeah, a I'm a big really guy. great That's way to go. Yeah. Of course, single family home is still amazing. No, no, it's not. It depends, on, it depends, but I like, I, I have some people that want to be paddled with that. I'll be like, they want to be like, oh, I want to buy a multi unit, move it, and say I'm going to live there, and then six months buy another one. I'm like, wait a minute, you know, you were there five years. Wait, yeah. who's there listening? Ran for Tom or something? I don't know. <laughs> it makes sense to stay it, but then when you have the numbers, like, yeah, but you're putting only this down, you're, you know, if you I live, think, you know, if you live there, like you did the five years, put your time, she put the time stuff, hard, yeah. and then, and then it, it, it grew. It's not like, oh, I'm going to, you know, it's, uh, it's not like, oh, I bought it. I'm going to sell it for a hundred thousand dollars. No, no. no. Yeah, it wasn't over. Yeah. So I think it's, there it's an important part of the puzzle that yeah. people try to kind of look over that, you know, five years is a good chunk of time. Yeah. You know? So. And more like, I feel like at XR, we're really real with people. We'll tell them how that's like, you know, you'll tell them, like, hey, it's not overnight for such. You're not going to like buy, you know, so I make a hundred grand the next year and buy all these stuff. Maybe, but most exactly. likely you need to keep the price. Yeah. Maintain it a little bit. So a lot of people, you know, feel like they want to buy the two, the four flat at Yeah. yeah. That they want to move out. Yeah. This is where I was going with it. And yeah. Another one at FHA, move in there. Yeah. Is yeah. okay. I know there's you know yeah. the FHA police maybe not will knock on your door, but what we'll, what are like we'll uh, keep it simple. We'll keep it simple. I wanna buy two flat FHA and then I wanna you know, maybe the year after I wanna buy a house. But I mean wanna go FHA. I'm yeah. gonna live above I mean, it's legit. I'm trying I'm gonna yeah. yeah. Or I want you to throw down what the rules are. So in general, you're allowed one FHA loan in your immediate area. Now, if you relocated from another state it's greater than 100 miles, you can have two FHA loans. But the old rule was you used to be able to have an FHA loan, and if you had a move up scenario like my family grew, okay. you can get another FHA. Nice. That's been gone since 2011. Oh. So you're allowed one FHA loan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's my fault. So you're allowed one FHA loan at a time. And so what a lot of people do is they will buy a multi unit, oh. live in there for a year or so and then they work on trying to refinance out of that FHA loan. So you, so you can only have one FHA loan. One at a time in your immediate area, unless you relocate it. An immediate area, can you define that? 100 mile radius. So take the house, big, draw, draw 100 miles. miles it's, pretty far. it's not 100 driving miles, it's, like, it's 100 flying miles. So you can get all the way up to Milwaukee and you're still not at 100 wow. miles. So it's not like, okay, I mean, down, you know, like, yeah, like, well, in and Chicago and then, and then go into the in the burbs. burbs. Go into Naperville, that's not, that's no, so interesting. that's where it's having a good plan, nice organic right. growth, right. saying, okay, if I pay off this amount, how much till I get to where I can refinance so, out of so FHA? Question. So I bought an FHA, 350. Okay. So I put three and a half down. Yep. And I want to, I want to, now I want to do that. So I want to refi that. It, let's say it went up to 400. Okay. How, what I want to do conventional. So on the refi, does it have to be 20%? Does it have to be five on a refi? Can it be 10? If it's a multi unit, typically 20%. So even on a refi? Not even on a refi. There are some special programs, but in general, let's just say for multi unit, you typically need 20%. On a single family house, only 5%. Okay. So this guy wants to execute this plan, he needs this to appreciate. 20 to 20%. Typically, you, it has to appreciate, but there are some low down payment conventional multi-unit programs out there. But but to keep it simple, if we're setting clients up for a good organic growth plan, we really want to say it's going to take you some time to yeah. get to equity. But there's always option. There's always new programs that you know come out. I don't know what tomorrow yeah, has in store. Exactly. And in the single family, since we're here, single family five percent equity. So you see, you do FHA, and then you throw them. Yeah. So you get to, so multi units. That's how you get in the business, right? Why don't you tell us about that, Karina? Well, before getting into my multi, 
well, before I purchased my multi-family, right. I got into real estate in 2014. I started helping people to lease an apartment throughout the city. So I was like a, basically a relocation specialist. I'd get in the car and they would hop in with me and we'll drive all around the city. And I started to realize, because I was helping people rent apartments, and I was starting to realize that the people that owned the properties were the ones making the money. So that's when I thought I thought about it. And I'm like, ding, like, wait, why, why am I not owning something? Okay. Yeah. And, and I figured, okay, so a few years went by. I was ready to get into sales, helping people buy and sell. Uh, but before I could do that, since I was working in a property management, I knew that it was the right time to buy my own building first before I decided to get into sales. Because obviously when you're working corporate, you get paid salary, okay. you're getting paid hourly commission or top bonus. And when you get into our industry, we get paid commission. Yeah. So it was gonna take me two to three more years to right. get into sales, to buy my own building if I got into sales. So that's kind of how, it was like a little trickle effect. I got into leasing, went into, got my own multi-unit and then I got into sales. Yeah. And we were buying our second multi-unit, and yeah. that's how he had it listed, but, and that's how I met Greg. Probably a long span of time. And yeah. Crazy. But it was all worth it because you, all had, worth you, it. you had to learn all the stuff. It didn't happen overnight. And how long you were in your mom? You lived, right? You lived in the one you had. How long? Yes, for about four years, and four, yeah. then leased it out and sold it in the fifth year. So you lived in one unit, rent to another unit. Yeah. Yeah. I just like to point out when people tell their story that it just doesn't, it's not a six months thing yeah. or you, you yeah. buy it and you right. get a check right That's true but it's and, and when it's i possible, when i became a landlord i had experience being in property management yeah. Yeah. so cool. if somebody said hey i can't pay you know the rent i knew okay well you have five days i knew the rules right yeah, yeah, yeah. um i also started like helping people manage their multi-units in like specific neighborhoods sometimes that are a little rough so I had to learn how to evict yeah. people, like how to go. I went through the court process. So it's like, it comes with a lot of like learning, a lot of, well, it was nice to have a lot of things, a lot of headaches sometimes, but it's yeah. really worth it. Once you get, once you figure it out and you know how to problem solve, then yeah. everything don't, else don't just, freak out. you don't freak out. You're like, uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> So, yeah. Bri, did you, you got in, what was it, how long have you been? Uh, I got in, I started out at um, a real estate title company in 2014. Um, I've been, I'm, I'm a real estate cool, I, I still juggle that and, yeah. and yeah. I'm a realtor, but um, I started in 2014 just doing closings and um, I met a, a, an attorney and yeah. I met Greg and you yeah. through that attorney. Um, just doing their closings and then um, just being the closer always. But well, you learn so much with the closing. Like, you, learn you learn so, so much. much. You learn about the loan process, yeah. the but, the yeah. title process, the attorney reviews, and you learn all that. Fight and closing. huh? Fights at closing. Fights at closing. Yeah, you learn that too. Walk like, through no. issues. <laughs> you you Stop, see man. you see the good, the bad, the ugly as yeah. a real estate exactly. closer. Um, yeah. Yeah, and um, and then I'm cutting the checks to everyone yeah. too. I'm, so I'm giving people. everyone their money at the end of the closing, and that's when I was like, you know, I think um, I should start looking into becoming a a, a realtor because yeah. I'm cutting all these wait, checks. Wait, wait, I thought after you bought, sorry, intro, yeah. I'm getting there. I thought after you bought the house, you got expired by me. No, I got you inspired know, by cutting the checks. Realtor, not because you guys have, like, she got inspired I got inspired by cutting the checks. I got inspired by cutting his checks. I got oh. checks. Exactly. And then, and then you're like, I can do this. Yeah. 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 You're like, hey. Then you're like, hey, you want to write us? Then you bought with it. You bought with Greg. Yeah. Then, like, Man, I can do this. Well, I, I, then I was like, hey, we should, you, when you're in the business, it's like you're going to buy all the time. Yeah. That's, it's, it, I think it comes natural for everyone. Yeah. They're, they're around it and they're just like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy. We were renting. Yeah, but your buying experience with me, for example, was it hot? <laughs> Wait a minute, it's getting off. Did I make now? No, 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 no. Did I make it like? Now that you're a realtor full time yes, and you know everything. Right. <laughs> wait, wait, she has the right. All the ins and outs, right? Like, did I did I show any like the drama behind the scenes? No, like, I made no. it really smooth. No, I'm just saying for our clients, right? But at okay. XR, we're gonna we always make it smooth for people. Like yeah. I never like any of the drama, the pressure. I'll take it. Yeah, you know, um, Josh will take it. My he, experience. Yeah. He helped me with Josh the drama. Uh, Josh, Josh, I call him Josh. Uh, somebody's gonna be yelling at you in two minutes. <laughs> take it. He's like, all right, dude. And then, <laughs> you know, it's about um, right. 
my buying experience with you, uh, that's what encouraged me to go ahead, like, go get your license. <laughs> but from his reaction, I think you answered correctly. No, but it's, it's true. It was all, Greg just, he always just took his time with us, and I, we would spend a long time long just time. talking even afterwards about the house or well, just life. And, and I had a lot of things It never, I never you even never realized, yeah, I, I didn't know. what you put me through. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I took so much of this man's time. Uh, but going through the buying process yeah. um, and just going with him, seeing yeah. houses, it's yeah. um, that's what encouraged me. Like, I, I can yeah. do this. I can get my license. And but that's I what we do. Like, that's why I try. Like, sorry, I, I know you learned that from me. I think you're like that too now. Yeah. Like, we make sure the buyer's comfortable, relaxed, could talk with us. Talk yeah. about his grandma, his kid. You know, we're not rushing them. We don't like, want to rush in one house. You know, we have time. Yeah, I, I like for the client to feel like you are yeah. the only They're one I'm on exactly. right now. Exactly. That you're the only one. Don't exactly. worry about who is calling or texting. We'll don't about worry about the house. other yeah. client. Don't worry yeah. about the seller that's blowing up my phone right well, now. Yeah. It's like we're a flight attendant. If they, if the people at the table see you panicking, yeah, they're, they're gonna panic. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. was always in, right. that was my mindset. Like you just gotta play it cool, even if, yeah. let's say, like, the the agent's going missing and we're having problems at the closing and we can't get a hold of the All agents. Right. Oh. Um, we'll have issues, and my That's my role to to play it cool. <laughs> don't don't let the people panic at the table. Yeah, it's really not complicated. You know, it's, it's not a really common courtesy, but a lot of people forget what common courtesy is. Yeah, you know. You know, I just act like when I was in a little town in Italy, walking around the streets and saying hi and goodbye to people. That's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Being nice. That's so. the word But yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it. Thanks for listening, guys. And um, ciao. Okay, we'll see you on the next